Throughout the centuries, many pioneering men and women have emerged to help the earth rise from conflict into harmony. Their vision and activities have left an indelible imprint upon the human character. Prominent among them is two exceptionally gifted Russians, Nicholas Konstantinovich Rorik and his life partner and wife Helen Ivanovna Rorik. Together these visionaries traced a path of light from east to west and back once more to the east. Profoundly mystical, Helena was a beloved wife, mother, teacher, healer, explorer, and inspired writer. The co-author of the Agni Yoga series, she is honored and revered around the world for her deeply spiritual books of wisdom. Although her charismatic husband, Nicholas, was known and respected as an archaeologist, anthropologist, conservationist, peacemaker, Nobel Prize nominee, educator, writer, mystic, and daring explorer, he was first and foremost a dedicated painter who created over 7,000 paintings in gloriously bold and sensitive color. The snowy mountain ranges of the Himalayas and other ranges throughout Central Asia were the subjects of the majority of his work. Although the advent of TV and Technicolor movies has enhanced our color awareness, we can still easily recognize Rorick's masterful use of color. He was a pioneer in its treatment. Nicholas and Helena Rorick, the book, is a true tale of adventure. The story of two artists' love for the world and their devotion to making it a better place. The book basically covers the last 30 years of their lives together, from 1917 until Nicholas' death in 1947. Helena died in 1955. At the time of their passing, he was 73 and she was 76. The Roricks and their two sons left Russia on the eve of the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. They went first to Finland, crossed Scandinavia, and entered England. It was in England that they physically met their spiritual teacher, Moria, before journeying on to America. Once in New York, the couple gathered together a small group who helped them carry out their dreams of a school where all of the arts could be taught under one roof, an international art museum, and a brotherhood of artists to encourage free artistic expression, a cause close to Rorick's heart. This innovative school attracted musicians, writers, painters, stage designers, composers, and other artists from across America, including Rockwell Kent, Raymond Johnson, and Marsden Hartley. Just before the Great Depression in 1929, the group built a 24-story Art Deco skyscraper. It housed classrooms, lecture halls, a Tibetan library, a museum, a theater, restaurant and apartments for artists. Hundreds of Rorick's paintings hung throughout. Following the urging of their teacher, the daring and courageous couple left America in 1924 and went to India to prepare for the arduous four-year expedition they were planning to take throughout Central Asia. Then by foot, on horse, camel and yak back, they crossed over the world's highest passes and the lowest desert elevations, enduring intense heat, bitter cold, political upheavals, bandits, spy charges, and captivity on the border of Tibet. There, all lives were endangered by the cold and starvation. The group watched helplessly as some expedition members perished, as did most of the pack animals. In 1912, a Buddhist Lama one of the Dalai Lama's advisors had come from Tibet to construct a Buddhist temple in St. Petersburg. He brought with him a prophecy concerning Shambhala. It involved the Pachin Lama, who held a position created several hundred years earlier by the Dalai Lama. The Pachin Lama was the spiritual leader of Tibet, and the Dalai Lama was the temporal leader. The prophecy foretold of the day when the Pachin Lama would leave Tibet. When this happened, a great army would arise to destroy the forces of evil and usher in a golden age, a thousand years of peace and harmony, the age of Maitreya. Once the Pachin Lama was reborn, he would then be known as Rigdon Jaipo and be the king of Shambhala. Shambhala symbolized both the guiding principle of the coming age 
and a place where the highest Buddhist mystical learning was centered. Small wonder that when the Rorks heard that great name, Shambhala, something stirred in them that lit a fire which never burned out. For the name of Shambhala stirs all hearts who yearn for peace. But when the Rorik spiritual teacher spoke of Shambhala, a new meaning was added, for he directed them to establish a new country, a new Russia, to be located in the regions around Siberia, the Gobi, and Mongolia. Had this dream actually become a reality, Shambhala, the new Russia, would have offered sanctuary to the countless Buddhist monks and nuns who lost their lives later when Tibet was invaded by the Chinese. So although it was said that the purpose of the expedition was so that Rorik could encircle Inner Asia searching for artistic and scientific discoveries and buried archaeological treasures, it was also so that the necessary groundwork could be laid to establish the new country. Only one year into the expedition, the Pachin Lama did in fact flee from Tibet, and wherever the family went, new statues were being erected to Maitreya, and the Buddhists could speak of little else. But the detainment in Tibet blocked their plans, for they were then ordered to return straight to India. Six years later, in 1934, when the Department of Agriculture sent Rorik and his oldest son back into the same area, it was said they were searching for drought-resistant grasses to prevent a situation like the Dust Bowl from being repeated in the future. But unofficially, the Roriks were being given another opportunity to meet the Pachin Lama and gain support for the new country that they planned to create with him as head, jointly with Rorik. Working hand in hand with their spiritual teacher, the Roriks brought forward a teaching of living ethics called Agni Yoga, the Yoga of Fire. Incorporated into it is the wisdom found in the teachings from all of the world's greatest traditions, along with consciousness expanding information regarding the universe. According to Madame Rorik, it is important to understand that the consciousness of the whole world is being broadened as with gigantic steps we approach new constructions. To enter the new world, we must rid ourselves of the junk of yesterday. A future of beauty awaits. Today, the Rorik's legacy of beauty belongs to the world. Madame Rorik's books offer illumination. Nicholas's paintings heal, soothe, uplift, and inspire. Although much of his work is in private collections throughout the world, many can be seen in museums in Russia, Latvia, and India. The largest collection in America is at the Rorick Museum in New York City. Several hundred of his over 7,000 paintings can be enjoyed through the worldwide website of the Rorick Museum. <laughs>